in the United States. Total outstanding balances of auto loans and leases are big and ballooning moolah. They reached $1.3 trillion in the first quarter, having nearly doubled since 2010, according to data from the New York Fed. Serious delinquencies, meaning borrowers that are 90 days or more past due, have jumped to 4.7% of those outstanding balances. That's at the same level as in the third quarter of 2009. And it's just a little over half a percentage point below the peak in the fourth quarter of 2010 during the unemployment crisis as over 11 million workers had lost their jobs and were defaulting on their auto loans and their mortgages and their credit cards because they had lost their jobs and couldn't make the payments. Because there's so much more auto debt out there now, the number of Americans who are over 90 days past due on their auto loans has surged to a record of over 7 million people, according to separate data from the New York Fed. That's 1 million more people who are seriously delinquent than at the end of 2010 at the peak of the unemployment crisis. Back then, delinquencies were spiking because over 11 million workers had lost their jobs and they were defaulting on the loans because they couldn't make the payments. Now delinquencies are spiking to similar levels and this is the strongest labor market the U.S. has seen in years. So what's going on? Ladies and gentlemen, I'm Wolf Richter of WolfStreet.com and you're listening to the Wolf Street Report. It's Sunday, May 19th, 2019. Of this ballooning amount of auto loans, now at $1.3 trillion, 4.7% are 90 days past due, this amounts to $60 billion. Nearly all of the seriously delinquent loans are owed by customers with either subprime credit ratings, a credit score below 620, or uh, by customers with a near subprime credit rating, so a credit score between 620 and, and 660. Just as there are more auto loans than ever and more seriously delinquent auto loans than ever, there are now more subprime auto loans than ever. Over $250 billion in subprime auto loans outstanding. So which lenders are on the hook the most for subprime auto loans? At big banks, 25% of their auto loans are subprime. At credit unions, 14% of their auto loans are subprime. At uh, so-called captive lenders, so the finance entities owned by automakers such as Ford Motor Credit, uh, 19% are subprime. At small banks, 14% are subprime. But at specialized auto lenders, half of the loans are subprime. And at some, most of the loans are subprime. So who gets in trouble over subprime auto loans? Not the credit unions with their clean loan book only. Just just a little less than 1% of their uh, auto loans are 90 days past due. And uh, not the small banks because only a small portion of the loans are subprime and the default rates are reasonably low. And uh, not the captive lenders uh, because they've become fairly conservative too on on the subprime side. And not the big banks Banks with over $500 billion in assets. There are only six of these banks in that group, ranging from Morgan Stanley with $850 billion in assets to J.B. Morgan Chase with $2.5 trillion in assets. They all securitize many of the loans they originated, and so they shovel a big part of the risk to investors. These big banks will have losses on the subprime auto loans they may still hold, but each of these banks is big enough to digest those losses. So how about the specialized auto lenders? They're among the so-called shadow banks. They have piled into this sector most aggressively. Some of the smaller ones have already collapsed last year. More of them will collapse. But they're not necessarily who owns these loans. They too securitize loans into asset-backed securities, and those asset-backed securities are held by investors. So investors are on the hook too. But a delinquent loan is not a total loss for lenders. These delinquent loans are collateralized by vehicles, which can be repossessed fairly quickly and easily. Most of these vehicles have GPS tracking technology where it's easy to locate the cars. Repossessing a vehicle is a heck of a lot faster than foreclosing on a house. And uh, there is a very large and very liquid auto auction based wholesale market for repos. So repos can be turned into cash quickly, unlike a house where this might take years. 
So maybe lenders can recover about half of the loan amount outstanding. Going forward, these losses won't be big enough to take down the financial system. But there will be losses, and those losses will be spread over thousands of banks and credit unions, specialized shadow banks and investors such as pension funds and bond funds. And a slew of these specialized non-banks will collapse, but they're relatively small and they don't take deposits and they don't involve federal guarantees and the Fed won't lose sleep over them and they'll be let go and investors get to eat the losses, which is how this is supposed to work. But there's a broader impact on the real economy and this is already happening. These subprime delinquencies started rising in 2016. In 2017, the Fed started paying attention publicly to this issue. In 2018, the first small specialized lenders collapsed. Lenders have seen this too. And they have started to tighten their subprime underwriting standards. And subprime customers that don't get approved for a new vehicle loan get switched to, by the dealer, a cheaper used vehicle with a smaller loan. And this is shifting auto sales from new to used vehicles. For automakers, this has already shown up in the sales numbers. New vehicle sales uh, at GM, Ford, and Fiat Chrysler peaked in 2015 in terms of vehicles delivered to end users and have been declining ever since. For the industry overall, sales peaked in 2016. Through the first quarter of this year, new vehicle sales were down 3.2% from the same period last year. So this year looks like another down year for the industry in terms of new vehicles sold. There are various reasons for this, but one reason is that more and more subprime rated customers are being shut out from the new vehicle market because they can't get a loan. And this isn't transpiring in a recession with uh, millions of people losing their jobs and, and then defaulting on their auto loans because they lost their jobs. This is transpiring during one of the strongest labor markets in many years. At a time when the economy is growing at around 3% a year, uh, th- these are the good times. And yet auto loan delinquencies are surging as if the U.S. economy were in a crisis. This points to several issues. One, This is the inevitable result of a multi-year debt binge by consumers with insufficient incomes to fund purchases of vehicles that are too expensive for them. And two, this behavior was encouraged, aided, and abetted by aggressive and reckless auto lending, motivated by the money that can be made lending to subprime customers who often pay double-digit interest rates when customers with top-rated credit pay 3% or 4%. Three, the reckless and aggressive lending by these auto lenders was in turn encouraged, aided, and abetted by yield-chasing investors piling into subprime auto loan-backed securities because they offer a little more yield in an era when the Fed repressed yields of low-risk investments to near zero and inflation ate up those gains plus some. And four, most importantly, It is clear from the very large number of distressed borrowers that not all Americans have benefited from the strong labor market, that this strong labor market is strong only for some Americans, and that millions of other Americans are struggling, and for them not much has changed since the Great Recession, except that a lot of things they need, such as housing, have gotten a lot more expensive and eat up more of their incomes. And these are still the good times. The cycle will eventually turn, which means rising unemployment and negative economic growth, which will push wave after wave of Americans to the brink of their financial limits, and more defaults will pile up. What is so disconcerting about this auto loan fiasco is that one, that it's a sign of just how bifurcated this economy has become, and two, that it's happening in good times, and we know that it will get a whole lot worse when the tide turns, as it always does. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm Wolf Richter of WolfStreet.com. Thank you for listening to the Wolf Street Report.